Hey everyone, I am your host, Metal Horror Gamer, and today we are looking at the original Microsoft Xbox. Recently, I've been buying and playing more games for the original Xbox. It had so many classic games in its library. It truly was a console that was underappreciated. It had so many exclusives, and it was the most powerful console of its era when it came to graphics. And most of the time, Multiplats looked better on the original Xbox than on the PS2. It's truly an amazing system and still is to this day. Since I've been going back down memory lane with the original Xbox, I thought I would share with everyone my top 10 most nostalgic games of the system. These aren't necessarily my favorite games on the system, but rather the games I remember playing the most on the console back in the day. And these are the games I usually end up thinking of when I'm remembering the original Microsoft Xbox. But before we get to the list, I wanted to share my brief history with the console. Because for me, it's a console that will always have a special place in my heart for a very specific reason. It has something that no other console can claim to have. But I'll get to that shortly. The Microsoft Xbox was a very odd console. It was basically a PC stuffed into a console, and despite having a great library and being the most powerful console of the sixth generation, it only ended up in second place. I know that doesn't necessarily sound bad, but when you compare its approximately 24 plus million consoles sold to the PS2 sales of 155 million consoles sold, you see there's a huge gap there. But enough about the actual console. I want to discuss my history with the console. You see, during most of the Xbox's lifetime, I never played it or even really had an interest in it. The PS1 made me into a PlayStation fanboy at the time, which I'm extremely embarrassed about now, but what are you going to do? So the only console I cared about back then was the PS2. We did have the Dreamcast and the GameCube, but if I wasn't playing my Super NES or my PS1, I was usually playing the PS2. Luckily, the PS2 had a lot of great games, so I didn't really feel like I was missing out by not owning an Xbox. Oh, how wrong I was. But everything changed in my freshman year. And yes, I was a freshman. I wasn't quite a freshman anymore, but I wasn't a full sophomore. Mainly because my freshman year, I was young, stupid, and in love. And I didn't care about school at the time. All I cared about was my girlfriend. And yeah, so I kind of I failed some classes and I had to become a, technically in the school's eyes a freshman, but technically I was a fresh more because I had some sophomore classes. So yeah, but everything changed for me in that year of my freshman year of high school. Across the street from my high school, there was this place called the Soda Shop, or at least that's what we called it. It's a place where you could go and buy sodas or chips or just random snacks. But there was something else going on in the dark back room. Why were a lot of people going here during lunch? I had no idea. So me and my best friend Kevin heard there were games over there. And us being huge gamers, we were just like, fuck, we gotta go check that shit out. And I didn't know what to expect, but I knew I wanted to see what it was. When we opened those back doors, we saw four tube CRTs lit up in a dark room and at least six or seven people sitting around all of those TVs. They were playing together, connected by four Xboxes. It's the first time I ever saw one in person, and on the screen, I could hear words like Slayer, or you gained the lead, you lost the lead, tied the leader. And it was at that moment, I got my first look at Xbox gaming with Halo 2. They were on the map lockout, and playing a frantic round of Slayer. I was intrigued but not fully on board with it just yet. And that's because Halo 2 was a first-person shooter. Before Halo 2, I didn't like first-person shooters. I never played any of the great PC shooters like Doom, Quake, Duke Nukem 3D because I didn't know of them. The first first-person shooter I ever played gave me a horrible taste in my mouth to the point where I didn't like the genre. And that game was GoldenEye 007 for the N64. I remember playing it with my friend who lived across the street, and I fucking hated it. It 
I hated the N64 controller for starters, and the game was so clunky and it was sluggish. The graphics were terrible and the frame rate was abysmal, even though I didn't think of frame rate back then, but it was hugely noticeable. I never had a fun time with that game. Why people love it, I have no idea. And it's not like I didn't play it back then. I played it when it was brand new. I hated it. So I have no nostalgia for that fucking game. And mine's not blind nostalgia. I saw all the problems with the game that people see with it now. But I saw it back then. So take that for what you will. Some love it. I didn't. (sighs) I was just like, this is what a first person shooter is? No thank you. Later on, I played games like Killzone on the PS2. And while it was better than 007, it still felt awkward and not completely comfortable. In fact, when I first heard about Halo Combat Evolved, I didn't care because it was an FPS. And in my head, FPSs were a terrible genre with horrible controls. And I wasn't far off because FPSs weren't perfected on controllers just yet because they were more suited to keyboard and mouse. So most FPSs on consoles didn't feel all that great. It wasn't until I first played Halo 2 at the soda shop and finally experienced how an FPS should feel on consoles. Finally, a game got it right. Great graphics, awesome characters, fun gameplay, and comfortable controls. It was always the best when we would get 16 players playing at one time. That was some fun shit. I couldn't stop playing. Every day for lunch, I would sacrifice my lunch money and use it to play Halo 2 during my lunch hour. Technically, you weren't supposed to leave the school grounds if you weren't a senior, but my friend Kevin and I didn't really give a shit because we wanted to play Halo 2. We went over there every day for lunch, but then we would also stay for the next two lunch periods. There were three lunch periods total every day, and we would be over there for all three. So yeah, we started to skip classes every freaking day. There was one class I never went back to for the rest of the year because I was playing Halo 2 every day. Not the brightest thing to do, but you know, I was a young stupid teenager back then. So the school year was up and there was no way for me to keep playing Halo 2. I was so freaking bummed. But in July of that year, I finally turned 16 and thus I could finally get a job. So I applied at SeaWorld. It was great at the time. Getting to go to the theme park every day, seeing hot half-naked girls in bikinis walking around all day. It was heaven for a 16-year-old who was single at the time. So when the time came, when I got my very first paycheck, I knew where I wanted to go and what I wanted to buy. My mom took me down to Best Buy, and I bought a couple of things. Here is what I bought with my very first paycheck. One Microsoft Xbox console, one extra controller, one DVD kit, and one copy of Halo 2. I couldn't wait to get home and hook it up and play the shit out of it, and I did, and when I wasn't working, I was playing Halo 2. Eventually, after beating it, I went out and bought Halo Combat Evolved, and you know, it kind of took off from there. I kept buying games because I needed more. Luckily for me, there were a lot to choose from, because when I bought my original Xbox, it was the summer of 2005. The Xbox was already about to be on its way out, making room for the upcoming Xbox 360. So yeah, by the time I was getting to the Xbox, it was already kind of late. But you know what? It didn't matter. I had a fun time with the console. I loved it. I played a decent amount of games. Not as much as I should have, but I did play a good amount of games. So the reason I have so much love for the original Xbox, besides that it's awesome, is that it was the very first console I owned that I actually paid for myself. I owned a Super NES and a PS1, but both of those consoles were gifts from my mother. I bought the original Microsoft Xbox with my own money from my very first paycheck. So it's very special to me. It means so much when you first buy your own console with your own money. And yeah, it's just a feeling that I have with the console. It's a special bond. And it's something that no other console I own can claim. No other console can say they were the first console I bought with my own money. Only the Xbox can. Also, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments which was the first console you ever purchased. Maybe it was a great experience. Like you bought a great console or maybe you bought a freaking dud. I don't know. I hope. Hopefully you didn't. But that's enough going through memory lane. 
it's time we finally get to my top 10 most nostalgic games for the original Microsoft Xbox. Now, as I said earlier, these aren't necessarily my top 10 favorite games of all time for the console. These are just the ones I remember playing the most back in the day. So this is why these games are nostalgic to me because these are the games that I think about when I'm remembering the Xbox. If I was doing my top 10 favorite games for the console, some of these would be on here, but there would be some other ones taking places for some of these games. So on that note, here's my top 10 most nostalgic games for the original Microsoft Xbox. Kicking off our list at number 10, we have Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Yes, the last game in the dark ages of Mortal Kombat. The three games of this era, Deadly Alliance, Deception, Armageddon, are not really that good. Um, they had a lot of problems. The combat was clunky, the characters look weird and kind of chunky, they don't look very good. Um, the different style of combats you can switch on the fly wasn't very fun. Adding weapons, I was like, eh, I don't like it. A lot of the new characters were unmemorable and a lot of them sucked. Um, Deadly Alliance, they fucked the series over when they killed Liu Kang, who is the main character of the series. They killed him off in the very first game, so it was like, what the fuck are you doing? And it just wasn't a very good series at all. Uh, but Armageddon, I do remember getting it back in the day, just because it was like, wow, it has every fucking character you could think of in this game. And yeah, I played the shit out of it. And yeah, I did enjoy it for what it was, but it's not really a game... I could really go back to now and play and enjoy it because it just those weren't really good Mortal Kombat games. During that era, the only really fun Mortal Kombat game you could play was Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. And that's about it. Armageddon is not all that great. It's not really worth going back to. I did like playing the Mario Kart style uh, mortar, uh, Mortal Kart, whatever it's called. It was like Mortal Kombat, like Mario Kart, but that was pretty fun. Very limited, but yeah, fun regardless. Um, not a very good game, but I did play it a lot back then. Next, at number 9, we have Area 51. It was a first-person shooter. Um, it was it was a fun game. I still enjoy it to this day. I never beat it. Um, I, I still remember seeing the commercials for it, and it was like, um, it was talking about how it had uh, Fox Mulder from uh, playing the main character, Ethan Cole. He was from um, X-Files. Uh, made sense, right? Aliens, Area 51, X-Files, made sense. And one of the other characters in the game, like one of the aliens, is played by uh, Marilyn Manson. And so I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? But um, yeah, it was a fun game. Not as smoothed out as Halo was when it came to controls, but it had a great atmosphere. It was a fun uh, first-person shooter. It uh, really feels kind of arcadey uh, more than typical first-person shooter. Apparently, it was a loose remake of the 1995 light gun video game of Area 51. So it's like a loose remake of it. Um, overall, still a fun game. The game I go back to and I play on the PC or um, on the original Xbox. Still a fun game. I really do enjoy it. And at number eight, we are still sticking with the first-person shooters and we are looking at Doom 3. Yeah, I remember seeing Doom when it was coming out. I didn't have a PC back then. But I remember seeing the commercials for for the Xbox, and I was like, fuck, that looks badass. And me and my friend Kevin, we both bought the game. And we used to play it online and just fuck around with the chainsaw, just killing each other or killing other people. Uh, that shit was real fun. But yeah, Doom 3, it looked great. It had a great atmosphere. It had some problems. Like, obviously, it's nowhere near as good as the original Doom game. It's really slow. It's kind of repetitive. And the whole flashlight thing, we have to, you can't hold the flashlight and the gun at the same time. It was kind of bullshit. Um, I didn't like that at all. But it was a fun game. Doom 3 was a great showcase for the Xbox. And that's a game that the, the PS2 never got. And it was showing you why. Because the Xbox was basically like a, a miniature a PC in a console. And it had lots of PC type games like Morrowind and Doom 3. So it was like, wow, you know. So Doom 3 was a real showcase for the Xbox. It looked great. Um, looking at it now, you can tell it's a downgrade from the PC version. But back then, a lot of people were just like, hey, it's like they got the whole PC version on the console, which is not really true. But overall, it's a pretty damn good port. It looked great for its time. But yeah, Doom 3 was a fun game. Still is fun for the most part. Um, again, not as fun as the originals, but still fun for what it is. 
at number seven, we have Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. Uh, yeah, this one I played a lot. I, I don't remember when I bought it. I remember playing Need for Speed Hot Pursuit on the PS1. And I love the whole plan as the cops and catching the cars. So when I saw this one on the Xbox, I was like, I gotta fucking get that one. And yeah, I got it. I had a fun time. The, the game still looks great. It plays great. It's one of those games that I used to listen to my music on because obviously the original soundtrack sucks, but the original Xbox, you could rip your CDs on there and listen to your music on the game, and it worked great. I loved it. Uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, it's a fun game. It's still fun to play today. I went back to play it again for this video, and I had a great time. I actually couldn't get off it. It was just really fun. It's a good racing game, and I love playing as the cops. I just love catching these cars as fast as possible. It's fun. So yeah, if you want some good racing action, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 is a good place to start. At number 6, we have Dead or Alive Ultimate. Now what Dead or Alive Ultimate was, it was pretty much a double disc collection edition of Dead or Alive 1 and Dead or Alive 2. And they were pretty much released for the Xbox in a dual pack. And I remember it was amazing. I loved the way it looked, the graphics blew me away. I was like, wow, I've never seen any type of fighting game look this freaking good in 3D. Uh, most 3D games looked ugly. I would always think about Tekken all blocky, and I would think of the the current era of Mortal Kombat during that time. looked kind of chunky and blocky. This one, no, man, they look smooth. Those The women in this game, they look good. <laughs> I mean, they look really good. And I was like, god damn. I still remember playing the game over and over again, trying to unlock every freaking costume. And a couple of the main characters, like the girls, like Kasumi and Ayani, they have a lot of costumes, man. You gotta keep playing the Ken and the Ken and the Ken to unlock each and every one. And, man, I had a blast, man. It's just a really fun game. It was really solid. I, I love it. Um, Dead or Alive 1, I didn't play too much. I usually played more Dead or Alive 2. Still looks great to this day. I, I was When I was playing it for this video, I was still like, wow, it still looks really freaking good. Like, really good. I mean, they did a, a, a fantastic job creating this game. It looked amazing. I love it. At number five, we have Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Oh, yeah. Uh, San Andreas is easily still one of my favorite Grand Theft Auto games ever. I've still never beaten it. Mainly because after a while with Grand Theft Auto, I get kind of sidetracked and I get bored and then I stop playing. But this game was so much fun. I loved um, listening to like the the late 80s, early 90s rap music like from NWA and Easy, Ice Cube, Tupac, um, Dr. Dre when he went to his own thing. You know, it had great soundtrack. It had great visuals for the time. A great world to run around in and just kill ballas. And, you know, it was, it was just a fun game. And I remember always laughing because when you have sex with like the the hookers like cj he like just says the stupidest shit he's like cj cj it's like who the fuck says their name when they're having sex i don't i don't know that's fucking weird <laughs> um i love that you could like make them buff like you can work out and get all buff and shit my character usually always ends up looking like 50 cent <laughs> compared to like the, the way he looked uh, when the game first starts uh yeah, i just love this game it, it has great characters a great story great gameplay it's just great soundtrack it's just a fun ass fucking game and yeah i mean it's grand theft auto you know the formula of grand theft auto but this game was really good i'm not one for remakes but if they could completely remake this game and keep the soundtrack and keep the script and keep the same story I'd be down with that. I would be. But knowing modern companies now, they would change everything because they fucking suck. But yeah, you know, you know how it goes. And at number four, we have Star Wars Battlefront. I l fucking love this game. Much more than any other Star Wars Battlefront that came afterwards. Part two's okay. But the first one to me is just perfect. I love the, the units you can pick. I love each map. I love the music. The game, oh, it's just, it's so fucking fun. It flows so perfectly. It was just a game that I played a lot, especially with my brother. We played all the freaking time. And it still holds up to this day. It's much better than EA's garbage versions of Star Wars Battlefront. This here is the real deal when it comes to Battlefront. Most people will say go to Star Wars Battlefront 2, and you can, but... 
I like the game better here. I don't need the the space battles, which is boring. Um, the Jedi's in, in that game, they, you get to play as them, but they feel kind of weak. I mean, they can, you can kill a lot, but you can die real fast. While in this game, you can't play as them, but they're in the battlefield and they're like impossible to kill. Unless you throw a grenade at them and they fall off the stage or something. But yeah, Star Wars Battlefront still holds up to this day. Still fun to play to this day. It's a great game. Oh, it's one of my favorite games ever. And one of my favorite games on the original Xbox. you got to play it if you never played it. Don't stick with EA's garbage. Get the original. At number three, we have The Warriors. Oh, The Warriors is a fantastic game, man. A fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, you need to go fucking watch that. That is a must-watch film. And one thing great about The Warriors, the video game, it kind of... You play the movie, but you also play weeks before the film. Like, you see how the gang forms and how they join the game. You see all the characters. And a lot of them, I don't know if all of them, but a lot of them, the actors reprise their roles for the game. And it's just great. The soundtrack is great. The game looks great. It's still fun to this day to just bop and just beat the, sh beat the shit out of a bunch of gangs. And ripping off people and mugging them and just... It's its fun. It's a really well-built game. I mean, most people don't like movie-licensed games. The Warriors is easily one of the best movie-licensed games, period, of all time. It's just... It's, it's great. And if you haven't played it, um, you need to play it. And I would say get the Xbox version. Because the Xbox version, to me, is the best one. Because obviously the PS2 one doesn't, won't look anywhere near as good as the original Xbox so yeah, you gotta get this game. It's fun. It's it's still playable to this day. It's just, it's just fucking awesome. At number two, we have Halo Combat Evolved. Uh, this one, the game still holds up. The game still looks great. It plays great. It had great music. It just oh man, it was it was easily the first game that nailed how to put a first person shooter on a console controller. It nailed it, and that controller was perfectly built for first-person shooters, and they just perfected it with the 360 and so on. So, yeah, Halo, to me, Halo is the true start of when FPSs started getting popular on consoles. Everyone says 007, but come on, we all know a lot of those games play like shit. It wasn't until Halo where they finally felt good and perfect to play, and Halo Combat Evolved, um, some people may not see a reason to play it now because you have the anniversary edition that kind of replaces it. But overall, you know, it's still a fun game to play on your original Xbox. It looks great. It still plays great. I love Halo. Um, it's a shame where Halo is at now kind of sucks. Hopefully the next one makes it better again. Um, but during this time, Halo Combat Evolved, whoo, that's, that's the granddaddy of the original Xbox. It's, it's amazing. Luckily, it was so common that it's not hard to find the game. Um, I, I actually had the game before I bought this one. I rebought it again because I wanted the original case, the original cover art. And I had the, the silver one. I didn't want that one. I wanted the original one. So I got that one. But Halo Combat Evolved, badass game. And now we are finally at number one. And the game that makes my top list for most nostalgic games on the original Xbox is of course Halo 2. It should have been freaking obvious. Of, of course it was. I mentioned earlier Halo 2 was the game that got me into the Xbox. It's the game that made me go out and get a job the first year I could and with my first paycheck bought the console specifically for this game. Halo 2 is phenomenal. Now we, it doesn't have um, a better campaign than the first one clearly because Microsoft was clearly rushing Bungie to finish this game which they shouldn't have the campaign could have been longer and even better but we got kind of a short campaign with a a quick you know like a little an ending that didn't feel right but it was still a fun game but we all know what why we played Halo 2 we played Halo 2 for the multiplayer and god damn was this some of the most fun multiplayer I've ever played, ever, ever. Halo 2 was amazing. I used to love playing it online like every freaking day I could. And I would play at the soda shop across at the school. And I can't tell you how fun it was to be, play on the map Lockout 
and have 16 people all in one room crowded around four TVs playing on this one small freaking map and just hearing people dying all over the place, people yelling, is so much fun, a great time. Halo 2 is just one of those games that's like, fuck man, if you weren't playing Halo 2 back then, it's like, what the fuck were you doing? Halo 2 was just a blast to play, it's still a blast to play now, it's a shame you can't play it online no more, but uh, I'm not sure if you can play online on the Xbox One version, maybe you can, I don't know, but it's not the original Halo 2, and Halo 2 is just it's one of the best games for the system, easily. And if you don't, if you have original Xbox and you don't have Halo 2, or if you don't even like Halo 2, it's like, why the fuck even have an Xbox? Halo is the main reason to have the Xbox. But yeah, so it should have been pretty obvious that Halo 2 was going to be my number one spot on this um, list because it is the most nostalgic to me. When I think of the original Xbox, I think of Halo 2 automatically. It's the first game I saw being played on an Xbox. It's the first game I ever played on the Xbox. And it's the first game I bought with my first paycheck. Yeah, so think about that. While the original Xbox was the first console I ever bought with my first paycheck, Halo 2 was the first one I bought as well with my first paycheck. So yeah, Halo 2, just like the console, holds has a very special place in my heart. It, it's I love it. And I'll never get rid. I'll never get rid of it. I'll never get tired of it. I still have my original copy that I bought at Best Buy. Uh, it, it's a little worn around the edges now, but it's a badass game, and I love it. It has its problems because it was rushed by Microsoft. Uh, Bungie couldn't take their time on it because Microsoft, their overlords, were kind of being dicks about it. But overall, Halo 2 was still amazing. And yeah, I hope. Hopefully, if you never played some of the games I listed, I would suggest you go play them. Probably the only one I would say maybe not play is Mortal Kombat Armageddon. The rest, go at it, man. The rest of them are fun games. Uh, I, I like, I still like playing all these games. Um, so yeah, that was my list of my top 10 most nostalgic games for the original Microsoft Xbox. And I hope you enjoyed my little bit of a, a history with the Xbox. Okay, we all, I know everyone has their own history with every console. And since this episode was about the Xbox, I would love to see comments about your history or your retrospective with the console. How did you see it? How did you get, first get into it? What was the first game you played for it? When did you buy it? What were the games you enjoyed the most? I want to know all of it because I love the original Xbox. And I would love to talk to other original Xbox fans who just want to talk about it. I mean... I've been buying more games for it. I have a, I would say a lot of good games for it now. I think I have like 50 games for the original Xbox and I'm not even done yet. I still have a lot more that I want to pick up and get and play. Cause there were a lot of games that I missed out on back, back then. And seeing that, I'm like, fuck, I gotta fix that. I gotta buy these games. I gotta play them. I gotta love them. I gotta just have a great time with them, which is what I'm doing slowly, but surely. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, let me know. You know, about what you think about the video. Let me know about your experience with the original Xbox in the comments. If you want to talk to me or follow me on Twitter, go ahead. I'll leave the link in the description. And you can talk to me on there. Uh, I, I like to post stuff on there about games or what other, what other things I'm talking about. Um, I'll be on Twitter. If you want to, again, comment. Comment in the video. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like. If you dislike, I guess leave a dislike, whatever. Um, perhaps share it to get out with more Xbox fans who want to see it. And yeah, you know, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. And as always, keep on gaming, gamers.